Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, your boy Virtus here and welcome back to the Unreal Engine 4 FPS series. In today's video we are going to be continuing on with our armor and health system and we are going to be setting up regenerating armor and we're also going to be showing you guys how you can actually take away some of the player's health and do it properly because at the moment we have both armor and health and if their armor is full we don't want to take any away of the health, we want to take away the armor first. Um, it's a really complicated system so if you guys do have any any issues when you're just following along just take it slowly and just copy what I'm doing and I'm going to try and explain it as easily as I can so let me show you exactly what I'm trying to do with my um, armor system so what I'm going to do is I've actually created a pain volume so that you can see that our armor is going to go down before our health so if I run over this over near my stairs here you can see the top bar my armor bar is going down before my health bar and once the armor bar goes down all the way down to zero, the health bar will start to empty itself as well. And then when I walk away from this, you're going to see that my armor is going to regenerate, but my health isn't going to. And it's a really common system in some games, but it's also really hard to replicate. So if you guys do manage to pull it off, I definitely tip my hat to you. So you can see here, you can see my health is now going down the red bar. If I walk away, you can see that my armor is going to start to regenerate, but the health is going to stay exactly how it is. There is a lot to this system, and I hope you guys look forward to doing it. So, before I do go ahead and try and create this for you, getting you guys to follow it along, I'm going to quickly break it down and show you exactly how I've done all of this. So, the hardest bit is going to be actually um, taking the damage away. Regenerating it is really really simple. So let's start off with that. So we're inside of the third person character here and we've got our two values, our health and our armor just like we did before. So what we're doing with that is on event tick, so every frame, but we're going to be having a delay on that. So every one second basically, what it's doing is checking to see whether or not the armor is less than one. And if it is less than one, all we're going to do is pretty much just add 0.01 to it, so it's just regenerating a little bit of that armor, and that's only going to fire off if the armor is less than 1. And that's what we've got our conditioning here for. It's really simple and really easy to do. The next one is a little bit more complicated. Once again, this is still inside of the character blueprint, and this is basically a function. This function is essentially a piece of code that we can call from other assets. All I've got to do is cast to the third person character, and then reference the take damage function, and that's pretty much going to take away 5% of the player's um, health or armor, whichever one it needs to. Now, we're going to be creating a couple of these functions, one for 5%, one for 10, 15, and 20, and 25. Um, so let's open this up and I'm going to see exactly what we've got inside of here. So we've got the start of the function which is marked by this little purple node here and then all we're doing is we're pretty much setting the armor to minus 0.05 so that's basically 5% of our armor. It's taking it away from the player. Now what it's doing after that is checking to see whether or not that has actually put our armor below zero. Because if it has put our armor below zero, we need to take that away from the health instead of the armor. So what it's doing is checking to see if it's less than zero. And if it is less than zero, all we're doing is just setting our health to armor plus health. Now the way that this works is our armor is actually going to be in a minus value. So if you add the minus value to health, what that's essentially doing is pretty much distributing the difference, um, the negative value from the armor to the health and then we just set it and that gives us a good value. And then after that, all we're doing is pretty much setting our armor back down to zero because we've offset that difference to the health. Now, it's really complicated, guys. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly delete this function and I'm going to get this back to exactly where we was before and we're going to put it together by ourselves and hopefully that should make it a little bit easier for you guys. And I'm also going to delete my pain volume. We'll be creating that as well. So, the first thing that I'm going to do then is I'm actually going to be setting up the regenerating health. It's the easiest thing to do. So all I'm doing is inside of the third person character where our health and armor is stored, I'm just going to create an event tick node. 
And then after that, what I'm going to be doing is creating a sequence node. Now, the reason why I'm creating this is because I'm going to want to do quite a few things on Tick throughout our game. So having said that, I'm just going to use the first one. So the first bit of the sequence, I'm going to leave one, the other one, you know, blank. I don't need it right now, but I know I am going to need it in the future. So from that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a quick delay. And this delay is pretty much going to be the time between each regeneration of our armor. So if you want it to regenerate, say, 10% every one second, you put in one. Or if you want it to be, say, 10% every two seconds, you would set the duration to two seconds. It's as simple as that. So for now, my duration is simply going to be set to one. And now what we're going to do after this little delay is we're actually going to run a check to see whether or not the player has actually got full armor already. If they have got full armor, obviously we don't want it to regenerate and we don't want it to go over the one value. So what I'm going to do is quickly run a check and that's going to be using the branch node. So with this, the condition is going to be float and then what we're looking for is less than. So we want to see if it's less than one. If it's less than one, then we go on and we add a little bit of armor in. If it isn't, it's just going to do nothing. So we don't want it to regenerate if they've got full armor. So what we're going to do is grab our A. And then from our A, all we're going to do is get a reference to armor. Because that's the value that we're checking. And then for the bottom one, like I said, we want to check to see if it's less than one. So less than full. If it is less than full, one being our full value. All we're going to do now is from the true is pretty much set armor and what we're going to do is simply float plus float and all we're going to do is get our armor value chuck it in there for the a all we're doing basically is the armor the value it's already got plus 0 0.01 and that's basically plus one percent of our armor every one seconds using this blueprint. It's really simple, it was really, really nice. So if we go ahead and chuck this in, just tidy it up, that looks all good to me. So moving on to the more complicated now, let's show you how to create that function. So this function is just gonna be for taking 5% damage. So create a function by going over to the left hand side here, press plus function, and then give it the name take damage 5%. And then from here, what we're going to be doing is the more complicated bit now. So first thing that I'm going to do is we need to take away 5% of the player's armor. So set armor. And then all we're doing is simply float minus float. And that's going to be the armor value. So chuck that into A. And then for B, we are simply going to set this to 0 0.05. 0 0.05 being 5% of 1. So... Next thing that I'm going to do now is I'm going to run a check to see whether or not that has actually taken it into the negative values. So all I'm going to do is basically float and I'm looking for less than. And the result is this one here. So after we've done the maths, put that into A and then, then B is going to be this. So all we're doing here is checking to see whether or not taking away this player's armor has put them into the negative values. If it has taken them into the negative values, what I'm going to be doing is pretty much setting the health to float plus float. And this float plus float, like I said before, is just pretty much offsetting the difference between the minus values in the armor to the health. So all I'm going to do is pretty much get a reference to armor now, chucking it in there, and then getting the current value for health as well, and chucking it in just like that and that's just pretty much going to offset the difference and now the next thing that we're going to do is simply set the armor down back to zero because we've lots offset that difference we're going to set it down to zero because we don't want it to be in the negative values so we're just going to put that back to zero just like that and if we go ahead and compile we shouldn't get any issues and that's all good so this take damage is going to do absolutely nothing at the moment because we haven't actually called to the function. So we're going to leave it there for now and we're going to press play. We're going to make sure we've got no issues. We've still got full armor. The value is not going over 100% or anything like that. So I'm happy with that. So now, now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a quick pain volume to test this and make sure that it all works. So what I'm going to do is create a new blueprint class. It's an actor and I'm simply going to call this pain volume and then with this pain volume just double click and open it up and then from there all we're going to do is quickly add in a box collision 
So I'm just simply going to type in box and then look for box collision. So what I'm using this box collision for is simply our way of telling the player or the engine whether or not the player has collided with this box because we need to have something in there. So let me show you. So if I quickly close my paint volume with the box collision in there and then drag it into the scene, you can see I've now got this box. This is pretty much the area in which if the player is begun to overlap it, we can start to damage the player. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger because it's quite small at the moment. So I'm going to open this up and I'm going to select my box collision. You can do it from the top left in the components panel or just by clicking it in the viewport. And then once we've done that, just scale it up, just grab whichever axes you want. So I want it taller and I want it wider and I want it a bit thicker as well, just like that. And then you just use the viewport in our game as a reference and that looks good. So that's pretty much covering the bottom of our stairs for now. So now to move on to the next bit. So we need to go into the event graph now and actually tell this box to take away some of the player's health if they're within it. So what I'm doing is begin overlap. All I'm going to do is cast to the third person character as this has our health and everything in it. And most importantly, it does have that take damage function in there as well. So cast to the third person character. And as the third person character, what we're going to tell it to do is simply take damage. And you can see as we type this in, it says take damage 5% and we can reference that function and it's going to start to take away some of the player's, player's stuff. So if we go ahead and compile this now, and then if we press play, if we walk into this, it should take away some of the player's health, which is all good. And each time we walk into it, it's going to take away more and more and more. But what I want it to do right now is to simply keep taking away the player's health if they're within the area. So what I'm going to do is inside of my pain volume, I am going to create a variable, a boolean for whether or not the player is in the volume. And this boolean is just a true or false value. It's quite simple. And we're just going to be setting this on begin overlap. And then when they end overlap, it's just going to take them out of the volume and it's not going to take away any more health. So I'm just simply going to create this variable by pressing the little plus in the left hand corner and then simply name it is in volume. And then for the variable type, make sure it's this little red icon here. Um, so it's from the drop down in the top right to set this to boolean. So what we're going to do is move this along and at the start of event actor begin overlap. So before it takes the damage, what I'm going to do is simply tell it to set is in volume. Just like that. And I'm going to set this to true and then link it up just like that. And now we need to create another node for ending overlap. So simply type in event actor end overlap, chuck that in there. And then all we're doing is setting this again. And we're simply going to set it to untrue. So uh, ticked being true and then unticked being untrue. So they're not in there. So what I'm going to do, tell this to do now is quickly run a branch and check to see whether or not they're still in the area after they've taken the damage. So what I'm going to do is get a reference to is in volume and then just hook it up to this condition. And what this is allowing us to do now is if the player is in the volume, we can tell it to go back and tell, take some more damage. But I want there to be a slight delay in between that. So I'm simply going to type in delay, add that in there, and I'm going to have a delay of say 0.5 seconds. And once that's completed, I'm going to tell it back, tell it to come back and take some more damage. And that should be everything for our pain volume. So if we go ahead and press play now, we should see our armor system in full effect. So if we walk to the bottom of these stairs, you can see it's taken away the health. All I got to do is keep staying here and you can see it's taken the armor away, but not the health. When the armor drops down to zero in a second, you can see it's starting to take away the health and that's all good. If I now jump back, you can see the armor is starting to regenerate and the health is going to stay exactly where it is. It's looking really great. It's exactly how I want it. So one last test that I'm going to do is quickly let the um, armor regenerate a little bit. And then I'm going to walk into this volume again and just test that it's still working. So I'm going to walk in. You can see it's taken the armor away again. And now it's proceeding to take away a little bit more health. Walk back and it's going to do the same thing. Anyway, guys, that is pretty much everything for this. There is one last thing that I am going to do, 
which is I'm going to create a couple of these take damage functions. So I'm quickly going to du duplicate this and I'm going to call this one 10% and then I'm going to duplicate it again and I'm going to create another one for 15% and we're pretty much just going to be changing some of the values in here to make it take away more health. So the reason why I'm having one for say 5%, 10%, 15%, 20% is for when we have different weapons later on in the series, we are going to have 20% for say something like a shotgun, whereas a little pistol is only going to take away 5% if that makes sense. So I'm going to open up the 10% one and all I'm going to do is instead of 0 0.05 being 5%, I'm going to change this to 0 0.1, that being 10% open up the 15% one and then I'm going to set this to 0 0.15 and then for 20 is simply going to be 0 0.20 and that's all good. We can use these later on. Like I said guys that is pretty much everything that I wanted to go over for taking damage and you know the armor and the health system. If you have had any issues with it just go back in the video take it nice and slow and just follow along. Anyway guys that is pretty much everything. Once again, thanks for watching, stay awesome, keep creating, your boy Vertus, signing out. This series was made possible by you guys supporting me on Patreon. If you want to help create other series like this, then check out my Patreon page in the link in the description.